we know that we need a home, you know, for our family, kind of like what we spoke about. So now it's like, how do we make this affordable? Good for you for wanting to say, hey, all right, how do we make this happen, develop a plan and a system and process so that we can buy this house and not be one house broke, right? And just make sure we're not able to do everything else and still just pay the mortgage, but then enjoy your life and do all the other things that you guys want to do with your families as well. So this is the budget sheet that I have that's over here, mm -hmm. right? Really 60% of gross income mm -hmm. should go to your essential expenses. Mm -hmm. Utilities, car payments, car insurance childcare, groceries. And so of that 60%, no more than 30% should really go to like your housing or mortgage. So you guys are spending about 8,000, it's a little over 8,000 per month, $8,042. Wow. Net income, and you guys are bringing in $7,000. So you're running the household at a deficit. So do you ever feel like you're spinning your wheels or money is a little bit tight or anything? Oh, every time, yeah. all every the time, time sure. all the time. You can feel it even if you don't know mm -hmm. the numbers. Yep. Mm -hmm. We probably need to start cutting back either someplace or at least setting some limits on a couple different things, mm -hmm. right? You know, I'm really actually grateful that we had this meeting because over the last few days, I felt a little bit of, of uncertainty about whether or not this is the right decision for you. In this high interest rate climate, maybe you can't get every single thing that you want in a home and the perfect payment. If you don't make some compromises, this may not happen. This gives us a lot of perspective, um, a lot of things to think about, mm -hmm. so we can make the best decision for our family. So thank you so much. I showed Rosalind and Anthony several houses, and I gave them a lot to consider, from square footage to school zones to monthly payments. It's been a week since they met with Andrew, and I think they've made a decision about how they want to move forward. Hey, guys. Hey. Well, howdy. Hey, hey Amina. So over the last few days, I wanted to give you some space to discuss what you want to do moving forward, because it's a really important decision, and I don't want you to feel pressured to go one way or another. It, this has been a, a really big journey for us from, you know, the first house that we looked at to, you know, going through the mortgage calculator with you, looking at our bank accounts, looking <laughs> at what we need to save, looking at what we're spending. I mean, from all of it to, to this point, has been so eye-opening for us and giving us a realistic view of what we should do, what we can afford, you know, and I think after a lot of talk, a lot of communication with each other, um, I think it's best for us to maybe just hold off and focus on the financial side of things for our family so we can make sure we can get into the home that we really want. Honestly, I'm really impressed <laughs> that you, you guys were able to come to this decision. You know, I know that you guys really want to get, get into a home right now, but the fact that you were able, able to have enough self-awareness and enough of a reality check to look at the numbers that the lender said that you can afford and then look at your lifestyle and say, these things don't add up, is something that a lot of first-time buyers can't do. I didn't want to take away from our family by getting into something that maybe we really can't afford, and then we have to struggle more, and then maybe not be home as much more because we're grinding just to keep the home, and then we're not even home that's, to be in the home. That's a great point. If you're going to get this home, you want the home and the lifestyle that you've been working so hard for. Mm -hmm.